Hello everyone. I am Jamin Bhatt. Welcome to season 3 of Proactive Physio Podcast. We are thrilled to kick off season 3 for the Proactive Physio Podcast. In this season, we deep dive into the fascinating world of movement and its supportive positive impact. We have a free resources on our website. You can find the blogs as well as free webinars. So don't forget to sign up and use the free resources. Get ready to explore, learn and be inspired. So let's jump into the first episode of season 3, the body movement language. Let's start with the quote. A hypocrite says, it is more important to know what sort of person has a disease than to know what sort of a disease a person has. So what exactly happens during the physical activity which leads to an improvement in so many ways in a system of our human body? Yes, it is a fair prediction that the particular exercise that would make a muscle stronger. But what is surprising in this connection? It is to increase in cognition. The part of explanation is that humans and in need all animals are mainly engaged in making a movements. The activity from the physiological perspective that is a digestion, metabolism, respiration, circulation. Even thinking and feeling have an ultimate aim of creating the movements that are directly outside and that are necessary for self-preservation and the reproduction of any movement. These tasks have a very, I would say it's about the Darwin touch. It is not assisted the reproduction. It is the only one that matters at the present. The movement is the ultimate aim at the end of our day and thus This is the single most important requirement of a human system. When those body systems are made to help you move, they will adapt to such a challenge and in the process of improvement for completing the task. Otherwise, this system may go into the standby mode and that we don't want. The way we move is influenced by the various factors. We consider the mobility, coordination, stability, balance, fitness, strength and power. in our routine clinical settings if the person has compromised with the balance we focus on improving the mobility as well as the flexibility so these elements interact a very complicated to shape our movements and posture in any scenario now let's imagine a network of this factor that working together and this creates the complexity of a movement and this is very important for us to understand about the movement sometimes we overlook the social factor in a chronic pain and these social factors are often overlooked in many clinical condition yet they play a crucial role in movement and a posture how we think others that perceive us and can significantly impact how we moves let's give us this attention and they deserve to help our patients even more if we talk from the animals movement perspective they reveals a key insight about its health its status and the temperament that indicates whether the animal is dominant submissive aggressive ill healthy or ready to mate now for the body language we are talking for the fascinating real arm of a body movement and this exploring how our physical action convey messages and impact our lives whether you are a professional athlete a weekend warrior or someone simply looking to improve your posture and mobility understanding the norms of a body movement can unlock a new level of personal and professional growth so stay with us as we uncover the secret held within our movements and how they can lead to the healthier and more connected to the life so animals excel at interpreting body language and using their own to send a clear sig- social signals these signals are crucial for survival human relies on social signaling more than any other animal our lives food shelter jobs money friends and family depends on maintaining the social relationships in our evolutionary past being cast out of the tribe was almost a death sentence therefore much of what we do aims to improve social connection key part of this is using the right body language since most social communication is non verbal this non verbal language is complex nonce and context sensitive 
If you imagine uh, attending the business meeting and using the same body language that you would with friends in casual settings, it could cause a problems. However, if you have a business experience, using the right body language becomes effortless and automatic. Your unconscious mind helps determine socially advantageous movements and posture without conscious thought. Here how this plays out in real life and sports. So now let's talk about the very tall posture. There is something powerful about the standing tall with your head held high, shoulder back and chest lifted. This posture shows confidence, pride and dominance. However, many feel uncomfortable projecting these signals in certain social context, adopting a more subbed stance with a lower head, slumped shoulders and collapsed chest. A tall teenager in particular often experience this social pressure with many of a patient that recalling how their posture changed during the middle school. Try this simple task to understand the connection between the posture and the social signaling. Walk around with your shoulder back, chest lifted and head high. Now picture yourself in different settings like a grocery stores, office, gym, cocktail party. Would you feel a bit self-conscious? I know, I would in some of this situation. So, there are certain postures that you can say it's a comfortable posture that navigating a social norms. My usual resting a posture is relaxed and expansive. When I am sitting, I often recline, slump or spread my limbs. However, this isn't always a socially acceptable. For example, during a lunch with an acquaintance, it might appear that I am not paying attention. With a close friend, this posture seems more appropriate. At work, if my boss is around, a laid back posture might signal a laziness or dis disrespect. If I were, if I am the boss, it might be more acceptable. But if we talk in a formal social setting, I often find my back becomes stiff and uncomfortable, an unusual sensation for me because I adapt a specific a posture. That's why. And I assume this discomfort stems from a social constraints preventing me from adopting a more relaxed and natural posture. So, this posture plays a very uh, important role in routine settings and we must look for this in certain contexts also. If we talk from the social dynamics of a sports technique, the way you play a sport sends a signal to other players and coaches about your personality. This is evident not only in sportsmanship but also in the techniques that you use. Imagine that you are a basketball player or a tennis player. You receive the ball near the hoop with no opponent nearby. In a basketball game, all eyes are on you. How do you score? Slam point dunk might intimi intimidate your opponent and impress the crowd. A simple layup could indicate a focus on fundamentals or it might suggest a lack of athletic flair. Your choice reveals how you want to perceive. Now, uh, sometimes in a social aspect of technique while playing the tennis in high school, a various effective ways exist to hit a tennis ball because everyone has their own movement signature. So some look creative and very impressive, while other appears a routine that are that they are playing the natural games. So, there are some often a clear link between the personality and playing the style. So now the context for a movement. What is the context for the movement? That is the a person. Let's say let's talk about a person who never bike in his elementary school. And when we ask that why, he would say that the biking wasn't his interest or he just didn't like it. He attributed her lack of interest to her cycle uh, to his psychological state also. However. A few years ago, the same person uh, used to do a biking, but now he doesn't want to do the bike. So why the sudden change? 
Did he have a transform transformative experience? He suddenly convinced biking is fun? No, because as soon as he got home, he stopped riding again. The only real change on the, on the biking was the environment. The ecological psychologist emphasizes the importance of location and context when we are performing the movement. They believe that humans and their environment are deeply interconnected. They making it difficult to consider one without other. For instance, when we walk, we are constantly adjusting our position relative to our surrounding, as well as moving towards or away from various elements. Movement inherently involves an interaction between our internal state and external state environment. And we often underestimate the environment's impact on our behavior. And this possibly because we attribute too much to our self-control and decision-making abilities. We like to think that our choices are driven by the personal factors such as knowledge, rationality, and the taste. So many of times we perform our movement with very skillful activity. So the movement and play both are interconnected as well as we, we would say that we recognize play easily in the familiar scene. Like the kids are chasing with each other on a playground or puppies are wrestling with each other when we see in a garden. However, for adults, the line between work and play is often blurred. Let's take a man running on a treadmill. It seems like he does work. Put him on, a, on some different terrain. Sometimes that becomes very enjoyable. On the other side, if we look, a two men kicking a soccer ball might be playing. But if they are professional preparing for a game, is it still play? What if they they are laughing and showing off juggling tricks. Let's consider a competitive 10 year old gymnast. Repeating backflip is that play or a Tai Chi students repeating the same form in a state of blissful concentration. The boundaries between work and play merge making it hard to differentiate. From scientific research has extensively explored a play behavior in animals and children and examining its impact on cognitive and physical health. Our psychological studies have also dwelled into the nature and benefits of flow states and how various motivation affects the exercise adherence. While there are no source provide a definitive definition of a play with the movement, the person does play that is intrinsically motivating. The play should not be very stressful. That must be a exploratory and play is creative. The social influence on a movement aren't inherently bad. Many great athletes and dancers because they want to impress others. Additionally, a learning through imitation is a social process. It's a fascinating to consider how social factors may be affecting your movement and posture. Thank you so much for listening this podcast. Stay tuned with us for next episode.